in the multiverse, the Green Lantern and the Dark Knight journeys the cosmos seeking answers. Jordan wants to return back to Earth to help their team against Darkseid and the Anti-Monitor, but Batman seeks something else. The chair knows everything except who the Anti-Monitor is. So their journey takes them to Earth-3, the home planet of the crime syndicate and the last planet where the Anti-Monitor slaughtered over 5 billion people. Batman got his answers here. So the next destination is to a planet where Hal Jordan first banished his nemesis, Sinestro. They need to go to the birthplace of the Anti-Monitor. They need to go to the planet Quar. Back on Earth, the gods are at war and the Justice League aren't even noticed. Blow after blow, shot after shot, the Earth cries in pain as two of the most powerful entities in the universe wage war against each other. Elsewhere in the battlefield, Grail charges at her brother, Calabac. You will die for our father, Calabac! Is this what you want? She screams as the two siblings engage in epic battle. Be grateful father wants you alive, Grail, the brother replies. She takes hold of his tongue, then goes straight for his eyes. Wonder Woman breaks up their fight and makes it her own. She engages Grail for a fight to the death, while Mr. Miracle takes on Steppenwolf. Shazam and the Flash are doing their best, but the oncoming armies are overwhelming. In the middle of a war she could never comprehend, the reluctant hero, Power Ring, raises her hand to summon her toxic powers to separate the battling armies. Elsewhere, with her battle armor ready, Marina Black stands witness to the end of the world. Apocalypse, a recharged Man of Steel rises from the pits, but he is different. Parademons are ready to attack, but without hesitation, the Man of Steel destroys the oncoming demons. That's taken care of. Now, what to do next? Clark is no longer himself. There is no more restraint and his moral compass is broken. He plays the predator and begins to intimidate his prey. Elsewhere in the multiverse, Batman and Jordan has arrived on Quard and they found the place where the Anti-Monitor had built his chair. His name was Mobius, and he came here to see the Forbidden, and he was cursed because of it. Something sat rotting in the center of the antimatter universe. Whatever it was, Mobius unleashed it. It changed him into what he is. Back on Earth, frustration and anger has overtaken the Dark God, and he yells, ENOUGH! Seconds later, the Black Racer appears and it goes straight for the Anti-God. This burst of courage pushes Darkseid forth, causing the Anti-Monitor to take a beating. The Anti-Monitor takes a split second to call on the Flash. Against his will, Barry Allen merges with the Black Racer. I know your one weakness, the Anti-Monitor states. I was changed into this because I held what you want. I am forever bound to it. An unholy energy source begins to emit as a Black Flash comes closer to the Anti-God. The anti-life equation is in my veins, he states, as he raises his hands and he blasts the Black Flash through Darkseid's stomach. His pain reaches through every corner of the planet which causes powerful beings such as Shazam to scream in agony. All goes silent. The forces of Apocalypse ceases their advance. Calabac can't see, but he can't smell his father's blood spilled on the floor. The dust cloud clears, and Darkseid lies dead on the floor. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joey and wow, I am speechless at what I just saw. Justice League issue 44. Let's get into reviewing this issue. But before that, why don't you guys take a second to enter for a free giveaway sponsored by Entertainment Earth. Links are in the description. Okay, let's begin. So as always, we get a crazy ending, but let's talk about the other things that I love about this issue before getting into Darkseid's apparent death. First off, I love this bantering between Batman and Hal Jordan. It brings me back to the good old days when the New 52 began and Batman had only met Hal Jordan. These two goes really well together, so I'm glad that they get their 50 minutes of fame. But this time, Batman isn't himself. We, as the readers, don't even know what's going on through his mind. As Batman, his goal would be to save the world, but the Mobius chair craves knowledge and is making him seek the origins of the Anti-Monitor. But then we learn that the Anti-Monitor created the chair and he was cursed because of something. Well that something is revealed to be the Anti-Life Equation. This revelation is really interesting. If my memory serves me correctly, Metron always had the Anti-Life Equation, but we are talking about the pre-New 52 continuity. But then, it is explained in the Dark Side Wars that Metron was there during a few of the different DC reboots. But let's say that Metron doesn't have the Anti-Life Equation, and that it is only in the Anti-Monitor. Well, we know that Darkseid is obsessed with obtaining it, and he got it full blast with the Black Racer running through his stomach. This is such a great homage to Final Crisis, when Barry Allen finally returns from death and he lures the Black Racer through Darkseid. Ah, good times. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, if the anti-life equation is revealed, then maybe the life equation will present itself. For those who don't know, I believe it was last year when the White Lantern Kyle Rayner was sent beyond the Source Wall, but when he returned, he held the life equation within him. Then that led into the Green Lantern story arc Godhead, where Highfather stole the life equation and tried to use it to kill Darkseid. Long story short, and major spoiler alert, the life equation is back with Kyle Rayner. So that being said, I would love for him to make an appearance in this story arc. So there's just so many great things that I can say about this issue, but I'm running out of time, so let's go for a few points very quickly. I absolutely adored the art. You can see that the artist Jason Fabok took his time and drew the facial expressions and the background perfectly. We also got Wonder Woman narrating her experience as an Amazon of Themyscira. I wasn't much of a fan of her narration until this issue because of her story on the battleground and a god that laughs, and then we get an image of the Joker. <laughs> How creepy and awesome is that? With such a good action-packed issue, it's so easy to leave some of the other characters behind. Superman did not get much screen time, but the other heroes got even less. Mr. Miracle, Cyborg, Shazam, and even Marina Black didn't get much screen time, if any at all. But Power Ring finally did something. I was starting to think that she was just wallpaper, but we see her overcome her fears and use her ring to push the two armies away from each other. That's just awesome. So I hope we can see more of her in the next issue. So near the end, we see Darkseid getting frustrated and he calls on the Black Racer. First off, who knew that Darkseid could do this? And then we got Grail anticipating this move, so that makes Marina and Grail a bit more interesting. They know more than what we're led to believe. But then Darkseid dies at the end. This is the same Darkseid that took over Earth 2, which led into Convergence. My mind is seriously blown right now. So it's no surprise that I love this issue. But now I want to hear from you. How did you like this issue? Please let me know in the comments below. Oh, and if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and click the links on the screen or in the description below to enter our giveaway for an exclusive Guardians of the Galaxy figurine set and the Batman Blue Suit cookie jar. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time in the Justice League issue 45.